Let's take a look at uh, the reverse of continuity a little bit. So in part B and C, from the previous example, the function was not continuous everywhere. There was a certain x value in both of them that we weren't able to use. It, was, it broke the continuity up. So that value of zero from those cases is where continuity was broken or where the function was discontinuous. So these discontinuities fall into two categories. They can either be removable uh, and or or non removable. So if you have a discontinuity, it's going to either be removable or non-removable. So let's see how to tell them apart. So this is your definition. So this is types of discontinuities. So the first one, uh, the function can made, be made continuous. That is when you have a removable discontinuity. And then the second one, if you can't make the function continuous, like you can't factor, you can't um, use a trig identity, you can't use a conjugate, you can't simplify the function down, that is a non-removable All right, so now that we've defined them, when you come across a problem that says, hey, discuss the continuity of each function, what they're telling you to do by discussing it, that means you have to list out where the function is continuous, and if there are any discontinuities, designate them as removable or non-removable. So you might have just that as your instructions. Discuss the continuity of each function. That means you have to do everything that was in the parentheses, whether it was stated or not. You gotta discuss everything about it. All right, part A. Um, let's go ahead and factor that one down. Like nothing reduces, but that's okay. It doesn't have to, but it does kind of help us determine where the function is continuous and where it might have a discontinuity. So you can't plug in negative one or one, so that is gonna break up your continuity, so you gotta leave out those two x values. So it's continuous every, everywhere else, just not at negative one or one. So those are your discontinuities. So discontinuity, a positive and negative one, and both of them are non-removable. Like you can't get any of these factors to cancel, so you cannot remove them from the function. Now with part B, you can factor that down And now something does simplify, or something did get removed. So let's talk about the continuity first, and then we'll do the discontinuities later. So the continuity is always going to come from the original function, not what you simplified into. So we're going to look at this one to get the continuity, which would be leaving out the positive and negative 4. And your discontinuities come from the original function as well. The simplified version is going to tell you like what is what. So which 
term got removed from this denominator to this one? Well, the x minus 4. So that's the term that got removed. Well, what, which of these two values went with that term or that factor? Well, the positive 4 did. So the positive 4 is the one that got removed, or just r. The negative 4, you still can't use it. It still makes a 0 in the denominator, so you did not remove it. So that's non-removable. Okay, part C. This one does not factor, and that's okay. They don't have to. But you can plug anything you want into that denominator. It's never going to give you a zero. If you square a number, it's always positive, except for zero. Uh, but if you take a positive or any number and add it to one, uh, any positive or zero, it's going to come out as a positive. All right, part D. Ooh, a piecewise function. Huh. So, it's going to be continuous if it does something like this. So, when it gets to the 1 on the parabola, it would have a, a closed circle. And on the second one, it would be continuous if the second line starts at the exact same place and like keeps going or something. It's not continuous if it does something like that. So where the second line would like be above or below uh, where the first one stopped. So let's find out if that happens. So to do that, uh, just take the, you know, whatever number this is. So in our case, the one, plug it into the top. So 1 minus 6 plus 2 gives you negative 3. So now you're going to take that same number and you're going to plug it into the bottom. And don't freak out and be like, well, hey, it says it doesn't actually equal 1. I know. But we're trying to see if the open circle and the closed dot are going to be at the same place or not. The only way to do that is to plug the number into both. So, like... It's not about whether or not the equal bar is there. Just plug it in. So you get 1 minus 4 is equal to negative 3. So now we know we have this case. So that is continuous on the entire real line. If you ended up with different numbers, like negative 3 and 2, that it would not be continuous at x equals 1. So you'd have to write it out something like that. All right, so we'll stop the video here, and then we'll keep going and talk about one-sided limits in the next